Welcome to the Kevin McDonald Show. Hey, that's me. Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'd like to invite you to hang out with me for the next hour or so as we discuss the most pressing issues of the day, both as an individual and as a society. Our guests will provide us with a starting point to think about the issue of the day, but the real solution rests with us. We have the power to choose the road that we will travel. Let's make it a good one. Laugh with me, cry with me, but most of all, join me right now for the Kevin McDonald Show. And welcome to the Kevin McDonald Show. I got to tell you, there are days and there are other days. First of all, <laughs> first of all, Lynn Benson. Lynn. Are you talking to me? I <laughs> I am talking to you. First of all, I would I would like to put in uh, my request to have uh, the uh, weather be a little bit nicer than it is currently right now. Okay, I'll take care of that. I appreciate that. It's raining for those of you that are living under a rock, of course. Oh, wait a minute. I thought rain was nice. I, it is, only except uh, can you plan for it? See, Lynn, for those of you who don't know, he does the weather here, and he makes sure that the weather works for us. And, and I just want to make sure that Lynn has it all together. So what I'd like you to do, Lynn, is I want to put it in an order for it to rain between midnight and 6. <laughs> okay. Can, can okay. you do that for me? And then, and then, and then the, during the day, it needs to be nice. And it needs to be nice long enough for my son to mow the lawn. That's, that's the important thing. I see. I see. What, you don't know how to mow the lawn yourself? No. Okay. I, I have I'm, advice for rain, by the way, when you have to go from car to building or building the car type of thing. What's that? And it, you look straight up into it, and it will brighten your mood. Oh, sure it will. Have you tried it? Uh, no. Okay, report to me later. <laughs> I will. <laughs> of course, I'll have to. It'll get my glasses all all messed up. And well, stuff, you could take so. them off. Oh, okay. And then I'll get rain in my eyes. That'll feel nice. Absolutely. By the way, Lynn, have you have you ever thought? I know that we all think about various things and that that may have happened to us and so forth. But have you ever thought whether or not you've lived before? I have not. It never crossed your mind? It never dawned on you wondering if this was like it, the only time you've ever lived, or maybe there was another time, or maybe and maybe that you've lived a past life? And I, I, I have not wondered if that has happened to me. I, ha I have heard the discussions, and I've wondered what they're talking about. Oh, well, you know what? In this hour, we're going to find out all about it. So I hope that you and everybody else will stay tuned, because we have Dr. Georgina Cannon, and she is from the great uh, country of Canada. And, uh, and she is with us on the telephone, and we are going to talk about past life regression. She's a hypnotherapist, and uh, among other things, and she's an author. She's got a book, new book out. It's called Experience the Power of the Past, Return, and Past Life Regression, and You. And so we're going to talk about that, and there's a fascinating study that they did that we're going to get into. So, so I want you to grab a pen and a paper and sit down and listen to this, okay? Okay. <laughs> I, I've got my pen. It was over there. I had to reach it. Oh, very good. Very good. Thank you so much, Lynn. And I, without further ado, I guess by way of a, a bio, uh, and Dr. Georgi Gina, I, I guess I'll leave that kind of up to you. First of all, welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you. Very well. Thank you. It's not raining here, though it is cool. Oh, it it's... I, I'll take the uh, uh, the cool. It's actually, it's rainy and cool here. So, okay. of, course, of course, what is cool over there? How, how cool cold is cold? Oh, cold is about eight degrees. Is how much? It's eight, eight. Imagine oh, oh. we're working Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So oh, so yeah. Probably about uh, thirty-six, to something like that. Okay, that's a little colder than it is here. Mm -hmm. uh, where mm -hmm. are you, by the way? In Toronto. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, Dr. Georgina Cannon, you are a hypnotherapist, yes? Yes, a hypnotherapist, clinical hypnotherapist. And you've been doing this for how long? Nearly eight years, so, and we, te we teach uh, hypnosis and uh, past life regression as well, so we have a school and a clinic. What is the name of the school? Ontario Hypnosis Center School. And there's also a website that goes with that, so the people mm -hmm. that are listening and are by a computer, they might want to go to your website and check it out. What is it, sure. by the way? hypnosis Center and center is spelled the Canadian way, C E N T R E. dot com. Very good. So that that is Thank you. Mm -hmm. O N T for short for Ontario. Mm -hmm. A dash hypnosis center, a da or hypnosis dash center dot com. Right. And I I went to look at it. It's 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 a beautiful website. And oh, you do a lot of work with 
past life regression, don't yes, you? Yes, we do. And whether people come in for it or they slip into it, you know, they sometimes come in for fears and phobias or pain management. And when we go back to the source of the fear or the phobia or the pain, they slip into a past life. Explain and to this price. <laughs> 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 I imagine for some folks it's it's it's, it's quite it's a, a surprise. Whoops. Yes, <laughs> the whoops. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, is it sometimes? Is it, isn't it true that that people who come to you with an issue don't mm-hmm. even necessarily believe in the concept of of past lives, or it, even know about it? Yes, yeah, so like it's, our friend Lynn over here. He's <laughs> never really he's never really consciously looked at it or or thought about it. But if he came to you to maybe uh, uh, cure an issue that he had. Mm-hmm. He might slip into a past life and not even know he'd done it. Well, he would know he'd done it once once he's there. Uh, he would be confused and, and sort of very curious about what was going on. And when people emerge from hypnosis and they say, what was that? And I tell them it was, some people call it past life, or you could call it, um, you know, a trip that the mind takes just so that you have some understanding about your current life. Mm-hmm. Um, because really that's what it's about. It's, it's, uh, it's really about improving your current life, making it full and joyful and peaceful and rich. So the learning and the wisdom that we get from the current life enhances, uh, from the past life, pardon me, enhances your current life. That's the whole point, really. It's, it's, so it's really not to go back on a, on a safari just to see who you were and to see if you were... Well, you, you were... can. I mean, you can. You can take a trip out of curiosity. You don't get air miles. You don't get any benefits like that. But you do get some insight about who you are and how you are. And it's fascinating because it, it removes any chance of bigotry because, of course, we've all been male. We've all been female. We've all been black and white and yellow and pink and green, and, you know. All sorts so, of things. All sorts of things. Most of, well, I don't know about it, things, but all sorts of, <laughs> <laughs> all sorts of people. All well, sorts of people. Now, let me ask you, because there, there may be some, well, there probably always will be some people in the audience that will say, you know, I think that's a bunch of hooey, this past Good. life stuff. And I love that when people say that. And, and uh, so let's, uh, let's talk, do a little bit of, of past life 101. What okay, do you, well, do you, well if, it is, if it is hooey, that's fine, because maybe it just is a metaphor that the mind makes up. And, and I'm not going to fight anyone on that, I'll, you know, because... My, my point of view is that the journey itself is the learning. So whether you actually believe it or you don't makes the difference. It's, it's part of the overall concept, though, of what your mind is putting together to help you in this life? Exactly. And, that, and, and if, you remember, if you understand that the subconscious mind has all the memories of anything that ever has happened to you from the womb onward, um, and we are just energy, or we are part of nature, and nature recycles itself, why wouldn't we? That is an excellent question, because now when we start talking about the fact that now Einstein proved, and and science has proved, that we are energy. That is primarily what we are. Yes. And energy is what binds us together, and it drives our brain and the electrical impulses and all of that. Right. And Einstein also proved that energy never dies. It changes form. Right. And so from that concept, it would be difficult for us to say that, that we were not, and then we are, and then we're not again. Right. So because part yeah. of who we are, in essence, is who we are. Well, what he says, basically, is that the distinction between, you know, if you believe in physics or if you believe in energy, the different distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we make up that illusion of time and when we talk about past lives it is possible because time is a linear thing and and we as far as we know as far as we know and Mm -hmm. but but in reality everything's happening at once don't you think right yes i personally do think so i this is just one a a personal thing it doesn't it's not from any learning i've had but i see life as one of those billboards that comes on with different facets every few seconds it's the same billboard, you know, when they sort of each section turns and uh-huh. you get a new picture. Yeah. And uh, so I see us living in time like that, which is sometimes why people see energy or see spirits or suddenly see ghosts. I think these, these images have slipped through time. Or when you suddenly see something out of the corner of your eye and you thought you saw something, but you didn't. Or you're driving along and you have a feeling that you're going to go off the road, but you don't. It's almost as if you get the image of doing it. It's almost as if you're slipping through time. 
Isn't that interesting? Because it may have also may have happened before. Yes, exactly. And you may have taken a different road before. Absolutely. So yeah. it's, it's interesting in that concept, and that concept can get way out there. But mm -hmm. you've done some research, and we're going to talk about the research that you've done and in conjunction with the Canadian Broadcasting Company, correct? Mm hmm And we're going to talk about that when we come back because we took, or you took people on to past lives, and then you went to research it. And mm -hmm. when we come back, we're going to talk about what you found when you did the research. Okay, great. We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to The Kevin McDonald Show right here on KLAY, 1180 AM. Call your friends. This is a great show. You need to be listening to this. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Kevin McDonald Show on KLAY, 1180 AM. And welcome back to, uh, uh, yes, The Kevin McDonald Show. I hope everyone is well today. And we're talking with Georgina, Dr. Georgina Cannon. She's written the book, Experience the Power of the Past, a Return, Past Life Regression, and You. Dr. Georgina, there, there are some folks that will say, you know, well, it's all a bunch of hooey, and we talked about that, that, that mm -hmm. really, honestly, it doesn't matter whether it's hooey or not. If it can help people, that's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. It's another tool for healing, basically. But people came to you at one point, mm -hmm. and they said, and I believe it was a Canadian broadcasting company, mm -hmm. and they wanted to do a little, just a little thing that turned <laughs> into a several things. <laughs> it turned into a bigger deal, and that yeah. was they wanted you to... Um, um, take people into past life regression, and then they were going to research the results of what you found. Is that mm -hmm. what they were going to do? Yep, yep. What, what in fact happened is this, the, the producer of the Sunday morning news show came to the clinic and said that she'd been referred to us by the International Board of Regression Therapists. She was looking for someone to do a piece, maybe a three-minute piece, on what past life regression is and is it viable. And after we chatted for a bit, I pointed out that it's not a circus, it's not a sideshow, it's not showbiz. This is a soul journey and has to be done with humility and reverence and respect and, um, and ethics. And she said, hmm, okay, well, that sounds interesting. And, and then I took her into the clinic and I gave her a past life regression session. And she said, huh, I think this is a little more than three minutes. <laughs> Let me get back to you. So the following day she called back and she said, I think we're going to make it a 20-minute segment. So I said, terrific, good. I'm teaching it in two weeks' time. Would you like to come along? And basically she said she'd love to and bring a camera crew, and, and I wouldn't allow that. That's, that's not fair and not appropriate. So she came by herself, and at the end of the course, she said, I think this is more than 20 minutes. So a week later, I get a call <laughs> saying, <laughs> if we round up uh, about 40 volunteers and we talk about um, a series, like three one-hour series, uh, would you be interested? So I said, only if it's done ethically, only if it's done with respect. And she said, I promise you, we're going to have a team of researchers. We've already started investigating the researchers. Isn't that funny? Researching the researchers. <laughs> they then found their, uh, so they found anthropologists, sociologists, historians, um, architects, uh, so that they would, anthrop yeah, uh, archaeologists, I said that, I think. Uh, so they would be able to track down the drawings that these people made or the, the visions that they had and uh, see what was relevant and see what held water. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And what did they, well, first of all, you, so you took 40 people back into past life regressions, right? Uh, 40 people showed up at the clinic. I'd never met them before. Out of, uh, out of those 40, 33 went into past lives. And, and seven of them just didn't for whatever reason? Well, they, they didn't. And usually when people have trouble going into a past life, um, it's because they've got an issue in this current life that needs to be dealt with first. Gotcha. However, all of these people had never been hypnotized before. I had about two minutes to say hello to them and introduce myself and, and let them feel comfortable <laughs> with the lights and the cameras and everything. And this is a cross-section, all ages. For, I think the oldest was 80, the youngest was, I think, 16, 17. Uh, all backgrounds, all races. And um, so it wasn't surprising that some of them resisted. They just didn't know what they were getting into. Mm -hmm. Normally, if someone comes into the clinic for hypnosis, we take 20, 25 minutes to help them feel comfortable. Right. Didn't have that choice. So the fact we got that many people was quite amazing. And so you, they did this while they were on camera. Yes. And then they took the information that was brought forth through them. Yes. They, either they wrote it down or you wrote it down or it well, was on tape. They taped it, yeah, yeah. and then they researched it. And uh, for some, uh, the details were explicit. 
street numbers and addresses, names of family, uh, names of companies that they worked at, um, places that were very specific as far as architecture was concerned, small towns, uh, shops, num- names. Um, but some, because they were so early, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, uh, Mayan, um, were, were very difficult to get documented information. So if you ask someone what the name of their village is, not only will the village not have a name, particularly in 3rd or 4th or 6th century, but if they did, they wouldn't know because they can't read or write anyway. <laughs> true. So, you know, for some of it, they couldn't track it. And so although we had some wonderful stories, they couldn't confirm them, and they wanted to confirm them. So we had to let those go. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was one in particular where a woman was a healer in ancient Egypt, and I asked her um, who she heals, and she told me that she's she's one of the people that heal the noble of the, of the, of the town. And uh, at one point, the man was in seeing her, and she was healing him, and I asked how she did that, and she got quite irritated and said, I chant, of course. And I said, well, how do you chant? And she opened her mouth, and out came the most extraordinary sounds, um, which was moved everybody. And, and the one of the stories they did use um, the woman ended up as a silk trader uh, from working the road from um, China to India. And she spoke Hindi. Now, she never spoke Hindi in this lifetime. She wouldn't know the beginning or the end of it. And on camera, she spoke Hindi. <laughs> that had to be uh, quite a moment. Now, does yeah. that... They use that in the, in the, in the show. In, in so... What they did is they went and researched this, yeah. and they found enough similarities and enough stories yeah. to recognize yeah. it. Yeah. And then they, they, I also understand that they did research on the people. Right. And that to verify that there's no way that they could have had that information. Right. One of the stories they chose not to use was a fabulous story about a young prince of Mayan in, in the Mayan times in, in Mexico. And the detail was extraordinary about a game that I'd never heard of, certainly, and I know a fair amount of history, uh, that they played in the court with hoops on the walls and and walls made of pottery. Mm -hmm. They subsequently found out that this young man had been to Mexico in the past on on holiday, so they immediately canceled it. They didn't want to take that chance. Really? Yeah. And so they, they this was done with the highest of integrity and they yes. did it and they took on it took it on with the skeptical eye. And th- oh totally. At, at the end of each time they say we don't know this is just what we found. You know it's interesting there's a there's a new show on um, I think it's a sci-fi channel and it's mm-hmm. a kind of a believe it or not kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And they did different things and one was a a ghost that inhabited a tower and another one was was a uh, entity that was in the woods and so forth. And the third one was a gentleman who claims to be an artist, an 18th century artist, because he went to sleep one day and this this whole lifetime kind of popped up before him and mm-hmm. he started doing some research. He's actually a police officer. And mm-hmm. he started to do research on it and he started finding out that what was in, the, there were 28 points that he remembered from his dream and he was able to verify all 28 points that no one else would have known, including right. the fact that his, uh, I think his mother was had a hunchback or something like right. that. So, so right. something very specific. Right. That happens to you all the time, doesn't yes. it? Yes, yes, absolutely all the time. And you, you come quite blasé about it. In fact, we say, oh, yes, well, of course. You know, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, mm-hmm. you're Queen Elizabeth, you bet. Oh, no, and funny, we don't get those. We, you know, we, I did have one woman who thought she was Cleopatra, she came in saying she'd want to explore the fact because she knew she was Cleopatra. Uh-huh. And when she went into a very light trance, she much too animated, much too theatrical. And when I asked her questions, um, like, um, who else, uh, have you ever married anyone else? Oh, no, Mark Antony's my only love. Well, we know that's not true. <laughs> um, so then we deepened the hypnosis and she went into another lifetime where she was a pioneer woman on a wagon train crossing the Midwest and the States. And um, the whole wagon train got attacked by a band uh, from the mountains, and um, the, the wagons were burned, and that was real. I mean, she felt it, her whole body, her energy, her voice was very different. And when she came out, she, <laughs> she said, whoa, that was, that was, you know, she's, yeah. So that she was gave real. up that Cleopatra she bit, gave up didn't Cleopatra. she? Yeah, she did. And because that's, that's the thing, is in uh, when you go back and you do these things, 
most time people are an Indian boy or they're they're yeah. a settler and they're they're just normal folks. Very normal, very simple people um, connected with the earth, or they may be soldiers, or they may, but usually it's very ordinary people who live very ordinary lives, as we most of us do, even today. Yeah, yeah as, as a matter of fact, most of us do, and we never mm-hmm. uh, attain a, a sense of, and, and you know, mo- in the history books from taking people back into regression therapy, I, I, the the history isn't that clear for right. a, a lot of what's going on in, right. in the past. So it, it would be difficult to verify some of it, but, but you, do you actively work to verify it, or is it really not even the point? It's not the point. Um, the, the client, if they want to, sometimes they see writing that they don't recognize, uh, sort of calligraphy or, or some markings on the wall. And when they come out of hypnosis, I get them to draw it down or write it down. And they take it away and they verify it. They look at it. And uh, it's, for us in the clinic, it's not the point. The point is the wisdom that they get from it, which is moving and profound a lot of the time. When it we come back from this break, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. We're, by the way, we're talking with Dr. Georgina Cannon, and she's written the book Experience the Power of the Past, and we're going to talk about that when we come back. But I also want to ask you more about the hypnosis process itself mm-hmm. and, and how it all works and, and how we get, how the, the subconscious allows uh, it to come forth, and why do we need to do that? We'll be right back. <laughs> And welcome back to the Kevin McDonald Show. You're listening to KLAY, 1180 AM. We are talking with Dr. Georgina Cannon, and we're talking about past life regression. And what that means, basically, for those of you who have not heard that term before, means that that you can be put under hypnosis, either a light hypnosis or a very deep hypnosis, and you will remember things that happened to you when you were not you. When you were somebody else in a previous time, a previous time period, is that is that a fair description? Yes, it is. Uh, except you are you, because uh, ah. we're all these parts of us. But and certainly... and the energy that we yeah. were, we are. That's right. Yeah, we're all parts. I mean, I, I truly believe we're all um, smart, and we're all stupid, and we're all evil, and we're all kind. And I think we're everything. It's just the pieces of us that we choose to use in each lifetime that make us who we are in that lifetime. I agree with, I agree with you. Now, now, what I want to ask you now involves um, something that's very touchy for a lot of folks, and that's the death experience. Have, uh, you, have you taken people back into understanding their yes. previous death experience? Yes, you ha- and you have to, because you can't, if you do this work ethically, and it has to be ethical, you have to complete each life. Otherwise, people bring into this life, the, the current life, the pain, the discomfort, all of the issues in that life if you don't close it off properly. So it's ethically important to do that. Now, having said that, the death experience is much more appealing than the birth experience. Just think about it. Pre-birth, you are faced with a plethora of choices, blood, sweat, tears, and choices. And it's, it's hard work. When you move into the light, when your soul leaves the body in, in the lifetime, even though you, the body may be going through trauma, such as um, being knifed or killed one way or another, or just dying of disease, um, by and large, the soul itself gently leaves the body and goes into light, goes into bardo or the life between lives. Now, let me ask you about that specifically, because uh, my understanding is mm-hmm. that from the work that I've done and the reading that I've done, and, and, and in, in addition to your work, Dr. Michael Newton's done some interesting mm-hmm. work on this subject, mm-hmm. and uh, um, it's my understanding that your soul, being the intelligent one that it is, mm-hmm. understands that when it's about ready to die, mm-hmm. and oftentimes doesn't go through the pain and agony right. of, that, of the body's death, it leaves slightly Just, before yes exactly yes exactly because it knows that this is uh you know why, why wait around <laughs> <laughs> what what's the point of going through that that's right yeah i've been there done that don't need to do that again <laughs> we know what's going to happen here let's not hang around let's go into somewhere where it's a little more pleasant and, and we can get on with the next round <laughs> and so indeed um because of that i think that should bring a lot of comfort to some folks that even if in in some of the horrific deaths that that you hear about, oh, that, that, sure. that we are as a entity, as a soul, as an energy field, mm-hmm. we are in control. Is that right? Yes, 
Yeah, and, and interestingly enough, nurses who work in palliative care will tell you that that last second or the few minutes before the, the soul leaves the body, they feel the shift. They feel it leave, and it's always a great sense of peace. Mm -hmm. They always say that. We had a young lady that um, had worked in hospice for 16 years. She was on mm -hmm. the show last week, mm -hmm. and she said that, that almost inevitably at the moment of death, there was a supreme moment of joy that would yes. cross these people's face yes. before they died. Exactly, yeah. At last, going home sort of thing, you know? Yeah, so 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 that is something that we can all be be thankful for, and yeah. and that's a good thing. So, but, but when you are going through this, do they suffer the trauma? Do they feel the pain? No, because then, again, talking about ethics, an ethical facilitator will make sure that if no matter what's happening to you, the soul rises above the body and watches it. So you have to watch it. You have to be there as it happens, but you don't have to feel it. So if you're being hanged or burned at the stake or in a concentration camp or whatever it is that you're going through, the trauma, a samurai you know, being, attacking your village, it doesn't matter. The point is that, that you watch it from a distance. You, 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 you follow the journey. You close off that journey. You don't leave it, but you don't feel it. What must it be like? Because you've said, how many regressions have you done? Oh, thousands. I've been doing this for nearly eight years, so thousands. Now, having done thousands of regressions, by the way, the next time you come to Tacoma, Washington, you're going to do me. Oh, for sure. <laughs> But with pleasure on would, air if you like oh the, yeah oh, oh boy uh, <laughs> i hope i wasn't like you know hitler in a previous life um but uh, um one of the one of the things that that you we look at is is how that affects us and what we are after and why we go do this and why the brain allows us to gl have these glimpses of past lives is it because of emotional things that we brought with us into this life? That... Maybe, maybe. Sometimes, first of all, I should again point out that if the, if the facilitator is ethical, they will always ask the soul if it's appropriate to take this journey at this time. You can't assume that it is. Okay. Maybe something else going on that you need to get beyond first. So why do we uh, then go back? Because, interestingly enough, that the soul takes you where you need to go. So if someone comes in and says, I've always been fascinated by ancient Japanese block prints, or I went on holiday to Venice and I knew my way around. I've never been there before, never read a book about it, but I just knew my way around. So we may, and when we're getting them ready to go into past life and they're in hypnosis, we may say, ask permission and say, and as we journey back, if it's appropriate, we'd like to visit the lifetime where um, you were in Venice in a previous lifetime, if it's appropriate. Now, the soul may take us there directly, or it may take us to another lifetime first that we need to do so that we can understand the wisdom that comes from the Venice journey. Kind of reminds me of uh, um, um, Scrooge. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, 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 yeah. the Christmas past, present, yeah. and future. Yeah. It, it, it takes you on a journey of, of, of what it needs, what you need to heal you. That's right. And understand who you really are. Who you really are. Which, which the is shadow too. I mean, we have to know our shadow side as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. now let me ask you, and I'll, I'll leave the death thing alone. But what is the most horrific, <laughs> or 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 what are some of the death scenes that you've been part of? Um, one of the funniest, actually. It was only funny because of the reaction uh, when we were working with the group on camera for the CBC show. A young man was part of, and it seemed as though it was a Peace Corps type of situation. He was working in the jungle in Africa with a group of others teaching the villagers about nutrition and about taking care of the soil so the food could grow and, and, and be healthy. And suddenly he stopped and he said, oh, they're coming down from the mountains. They're coming, <laughs> they're fighting and they're killing. And oh, and his eyes opened. And I said, what happened? And he said, they cut my head off. <laughs> I said, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Oh, dear. And the camera, the camera. I'm a guy. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite a moment. It was a moment. It was a moment. <laughs> well, and, no. and, and and then the film producer afterwards said, "Do you think he's going to sue?" <laughs> 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 oh, brother! It oh, was brother. very funny. Well, let's talk about your book, in yeah. which is it's called Return. It's called Return. Experience Return. the power of the past, and uh, um, Return. Return. And, uh, I was going to call it Recycle, but I thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Now, what motivated you to write the book? 
I just wanted people to understand that it's not woo-woo. It's only another tool to enable you to enrich your current life. You know, people are a little scared of it. They're a little frightened of it if they believed in it at all. I just wanted to show how pragmatic it is. My background is in, in business and in journalism. So, you know, if it doesn't work, I don't care. I don't want to know about it. I'm very pragmatic. So I wanted everyone to understand how easy it is as long as you do it ethically and you protect yourself and you ask the soul's permission. So in the book, there is, you have a, two choices. You have a way of, of doing it for yourself. And if you fill out a form, by the way, at the back of the book, you also get the free CD to help you get there. Or the right way of choosing a facilitator. So whether you choose to do it yourself or find the appropriate facilitator, it's all there in the book. There's some case histories. There's some actual history uh, of uh, past life regression. There's the whole discussion around ethics. But it's written in a very accessible manner. Uh, I hope you found that. I mean, I, I, I did. I don't know if you found time to read it, but I do hope you found time. Oh yeah, this is this is one of my one, this is one of the things I'm very interested in because mm -hmm. I, for one, I can tell you this. I live in Seattle, Washington. I've lived here my whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a I'm um I, I'm a short, fat, white guy is what I mm -hmm. like to call mm -hmm. it. But I don't know what it's like to be a tall black woman from Nairobi or a a Jewish guy who lives in the Middle East or you know in any of those right. sorts of things. And I would like to think that this isn't the only shot I have. Right. That I would like to think that we get to do this over and again if we choose to. Okay. Well, I know that Borders is carrying the book, for instance. And if you go pop across to Vancouver, you can get it at Banyan Books or Indigo or Chapters. And it's also on Amazon, right? It's on Amazon. So it will and it's be on, on our website, too. It will be on my website as well. And, oh, bless you. Thanks. And so that you can order it. You can go to, to thekevinmcdonaldshow.com, and mm -hmm. uh, under books, I've got a whole series of books and authors that can be very helpful to people, and right. this will go there. And Michael oh. Newton's work is actually on there. So. Oh, terrific, yeah. yeah his, so, his work is, is wonderful. Uh, it's it's a great, great starter for people who want to know more about this. It's a very interesting concept, because mm -hmm. what his work is is taking people into really, really, really deep hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you do as well? Yes, yes, especially if we're doing future lives or life between life. Distance. Well, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said future lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And well, time is all now. What's the difference? That's, that's true. So you have actually not regressed people but moved them forward? Yes, but I don't do it unless, I mean, I don't have people... I won't take a client who comes in and says, I want to go into the future, I want to win the lottery. You know, I'm not prepared to do that. Um, but if people who are truly interested in time travel, who, who've done a fair amount of regression work, who've done a lot of soul work for themselves, because when we go into the future, we don't go in five years or ten years, we go into hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. so, so let me ask that's you. That's my next book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So let me ask you, as far as the future goes, I don't know if you've noticed, Mm -hmm. But um, the world seems to be in a bit of a turmoil yes, it is. of late, yeah. and uh, there's there's lots of negativity, and there. Mm -hmm. every day you hear about uh, more people and that are being killed, and 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 a lot mm -hmm. of negativity and mm -hmm. and hatred and that sort of thing. Does it get better in the future? It gets better in the future if we start to listen to the heart instead of the head, and particularly in the states right now, they have a prime opportunity to make change. And you've got to use that because right now, all, everything that you've been doing up to now hasn't got you to where you want to go. Ain't you that better, the truth? You better change it. Well, because if you keep doing the same, guess what? You get the same stuff. That's what we call the definition of insanity. That's right. Doing the same thing and expecting a different result. That's right. And, and I, so far, I think that we can all agree, every one of us, that, that what is going on now is not something that we would like to have happen. Right, you know, or would, even like to own. I mean, if we had to sign everything we did, if we had to put our name on everything we did, like an artist does, uh -huh. I want to know who would sign what's going on right now. Who would actually put their name on it? I don't think Say anybody. I, yeah. yeah, right. I think everybody is wanting to, to make things better. It's just how we're going to get there. Yeah, but if you do that from the heart, if you think with the heart, I'm not saying don't think, but I am think with the heart. In other words, it's the solution after next. It's not this solution. It's the solution after next. It's the way the, the indigenous tribes say, for our seven generations away, for our great, 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 great grandchildren, the solution after next, then you would make different decisions. No question. We are talking with Dr. Georgina Cannon. She's written the book. It's called Return. Return, yes. And uh, the subtitle is Experience, the Power of the Past, <laughs> Past Life Regression, and You. It is 
a way for you in the privacy of your own home mm -hmm. to be able to do uh, a past life regression um, without even having a facilitator there. Mm -hmm. um, although it probably, do you advocate, does it matter either way or would it be better to have one? I think the first time it might be better to have one. So you know what to expect, because when you do it yourself, remember, there's a part of your conscious mind that's still there. Yeah, I know, and I, I tried that once, and uh, and I was still going, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Am I there yet? Am I, there? Is <laughs> like this it? Am I here? Like Am I here? Yeah, it's like, it's like, when are we going to get there yet? And and I I had trouble with that. So yeah. um, it's much easier when you have a facilitator, yeah. I think. Yeah. We need to take a break, uh, uh, Georgina, and when we come back, I want to talk to you about your book, Return, and all of the things that you're doing and how it is that you got into hypnotherapy to begin with. <laughs> I'm sure that's a fascinating story. We'll be right back after these messages. The Kevin McDonald Show, every weekday on KLAY 1180 AM. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Benson, Lynn Benson, and it's great to have him here, and he's taking notes because we've got the Dr. Georgina Cannon on the phone with us. She is from Toronto, our brothers to the north in Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, she is a, um, a clinical hypnotherapist, and she does work with past life regression, and we just found out forward life regression, and I guess at the bottom line here, doctor, isn't it that we, what you do through hypnosis is put us in touch with our higher self yes with, with truly the who we are with the very best of who we are isn't that a lovely thing to do i mean we're so busy quite often talking about the things we're not good at i'm not good at this or i'm not good at that when we really connect with the truly who we are which is the best part of us um certainly changes life it makes it more palatable for us to be here to mm -hmm. yeah more oh. palatable. it sets a standard higher too you know you, oh boy yeah you can't you can't the more work you do around this area the more humble you become more humility we find and when when people first come and work in the clinic they they their ego gets a little large and i warn them about that they begin to think they're god because we do such magical work with hypnosis but after they do past life regression a few months the, the humility begins to set in because we understand the magnificence of the human, the magnificence of the soul. And that's our job is to help people find their own magnificence. Truly, that's what it is. Why do you think it is that we as a species have so much trouble with finding out who we really are and living to our highest potential? Because we like dust and noise. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we like the drama. We like the drama. We're all drama queens. If, if life's too simple, we make it complex. Uh, people are too happy, they go out and do something crazy. You know, they, they pick up someone they should never have met in the first place. They, you know, they steal from the store. They, they get into trouble with their boss. They do stupid things. Because we can't handle success. Can't handle happiness. <laughs> can't handle simplicity. Can't handle being in the moment and understanding that that's truly what it is. Well, and you know what's interesting? I, I had a young lady and... Uh, she was a three-time cancer survivor, mm -hmm. and she, you know, if anyone has the ability to live in the moment, it yeah. is a cancer survivor. For sure. And because, you, you know, there, she's always contemplating death and what that's going to be like, and mm -hmm. she has a saying, and it's, it's, a little, it's a little vulgar, but it bears repeating, I think. It says, if you've got one foot in the past and one foot in the future, then you're peeing on the present. Oh, I love it. Because you're not living the moment that you are destined to be here, and then and this moment is all you've got. And we all, and we talk about on the show things like when the moment that you are at the uh, um, cash register of the of the grocery store, mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity at that moment to make somebody else's day a little bit better mm -hmm. or not. That's a mm -hmm. choice that you get to make, and we get those moments every moment of every day, every, every time. And we have the opportunity, or and I think the obligation. To live yes. our highest self. Yes. And yes. I tell you what, if, if we all tried to live our highest self, a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world today would not be happening. Well, it, we would, it wouldn't even be considered. Yes. Uh, how could we possibly live with pictures? Uh, if we saw pictures of Sudan the way it is right now, how could we live eating a meal the way we do and allowing all the money to go toward destruction instead of, healing and help and food and water and 
We've, care. we've talked about that, that, that uh, and, a, and again, it bears repeating, that, that the, the statistics are frightening, that 3,000 children die of starvation every hour on our planet. Mm-hmm. On our planet. Because mm-hmm. it is our planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3,000 people die every hour. And that, mm-hmm. and that uh, the richest 250 people have more money than the bottom yeah. 3 billion people. Yeah, yeah. And it's not only those that die. It's those, for instance, I don't know in your city how many children are born in doorways of homeless teenagers. Ah. It's, it's that sort of life that is a, is, that is a, a spiritual death, mm-hmm. uh, an energy death. They yeah. survive, but at what cost? In your work mm-hmm. and, and with hypnotherapy and so forth, are mm-hmm. you able to help people realize their bigger potential of who oh, they really are? That's the best part. And if I had my druthers, hypnosis would be in schools. Uh, in fact, one of my dreams is to open the clinic on Sundays for street kids because once people understand they have choice and that the mind, their subconscious mind is powerful, they can do anything they want. Athletes prove that all the time. Yes, they do. As a matter of fact, we had a young lady here. Her name is Megan Kwan, and she was a double gold medal winner in the 2000 uh, uh, Games in Sydney. Right. And she said that that when she was 12, she watched the Olympics, and she made a decision that she wanted to be an Olympic athlete. Now, when right. she was nine, she got into the water for the first time, it mm-hmm. took, and she was like a, a floundering duck. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she started on a process and she mm-hmm. made goals and she put goals all over a room and she mm-hmm. said them every day and she read them and she and she worked hard and she got up at four o'clock in the morning and did the work mm-hmm. and she became a double, double gold medal winner and that yeah. that was an important story for she me. knew she had choice yes mm-hmm. she had a choice that she could either do it or not it was up to That's her right. right but most people don't know that particularly if they're born into into poverty they don't know that well and for them success is eating that That's day right. or yeah or staying dry, yes. And yes. I'm, I'm convinced that we, as, as, as a world population, we need to change that so that we can all live in, in better. And I think that that would make us a much more peaceful place. So that's, that's one of the goals that we have, is to help street kids understand they have choice. That's a wonderful goal. That's a wonderful goal. Yeah. And, and uh, I know that it would be a little controversial to put uh, hypnotherapy into the schools, but it can help people because it can give them more confidence, can it? The only reason it's controversial is because people don't understand what it is. What they is don't it understand, then? Well, they don't understand that we make choices all the time, even if it's to choose to do nothing. But, the, but they don't understand the power of the choice. They don't understand the power of the mind. We listen to messages all the time that are negative, usually. You're not good, you're no good, you're stupid, you're dumb, you drop the ball, you know, you're a klutz, all of that. And we take it in as, as the truth, and it becomes part of who we are. But they don't realize that, that we can use that same power for positive rather than negative. You know, That's I, all hypnosis is. Absolutely. And it, so it helps you clear out some of the clutter. Clears up, it clears up the clutter. It goes into the subconscious, which is where all of your feelings and emotions and learning and memories go. So if you have a memory of something, which you probably don't remember at a, at a conscious level, something that happened to you at three or four, and someone said to you, you're such a bad boy. Every time I turn around, you're getting into trouble. I don't know whether you're going to come to anything or not. And people do this all the time to their kids. Yep. It goes in, and it stays there as a three-year-old memory. So you may be 28 or 29 years old, but that memory of a three-year-old is still there in the subconscious, and it doesn't matter how hard you try, you sort of, a part of you knows it's not going to be successful. And you don't know why, but you keep shooting yourself in the foot. Because when you were a, a three-year-old, somebody that you loved dearly yeah, validated that you weren't going to be anything. That's right. You now, know. they didn't mean it, no. but it went in. Because as a ch- child, we truly believe that everything revolves around us and everything's about us. And so, so, and so you, we, even when there are arguments at home between mommy and daddy, mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you tend to think it's your fault. Absolutely. Totally. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. You know, and, and talking about choices, I don't know if... if uh, uh, everyone, I, and I suspect they have, um, has been at a particular point in their life where one choice, one moment in time, mm-hmm. would have changed everything about their life. Mm-hmm. And I think that we are all there. And if you can put it into that terms, mine happened happened when I was uh, um, in, go, a friend of mine told me he wanted to go 
take auto body in, at uh, uh, a community college. We were waiters together in a restaurant. I was doing really nothing with my life. And I said, okay, well, we'll go do auto body shop. And I went, <laughs> went to do that with him. And we were standing in line. You know how it is at a community college. Mm-hmm. You're standing in line, and you're waiting to get to talk to the counselors at the various tables that mm-hmm. they have set up and so mm-hmm. forth. And uh, um, so we were standing in line, and we were like third from the front. And my friend turned to me and said, you know, I really don't want to take auto body shop <laughs> after all. So I looked at him and I said, what? We're standing, we've been here for 45 minutes and now you don't want to even enroll? And he said, no, I don't think so. And, uh, and, I, and so I had at that moment, I had a choice. I could mm-hmm. either do something or I could go back with him and then continue the, the life. And I said, well, I'm here. And as it turned out in the, in the uh, front, one of the front uh, counselors was the drama coach. Oh. And, and there was nobody sitting at his table. And so I said, well, you know, I've always wanted to be in a play, and I've oh. always wanted to act. So I went and took a chance and made a choice and went and sat down there. And that led me to a completely different life. That's where I met my wife. That's where I got into radio. That's where I got into acting. So the Terrific. whole thing. So Terrific. it's we all have got those moments that yes. we have the opportunity to choose. Yes, yes. And it's when we blow that and we we don't, Can you help people recognize that, right? Recognize that. And also be aware of choices and be aware that everything we do is a choice. Yes. Everything. And for people who are going through depression, for instance, just getting up in the morning or not is a choice. Everything we do is a choice. And it's up to us to choose what benefits us and benefits humanity. We've been talking with Dr. Georgina Cannon. You are a wonderful person, I have to tell you. Oh, yes, you and, are. And I want to thank you very much Can for being on the show. Can I come dinner again? Yes, you may. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to have you on again. And, the, and if you ever come to the Northwest, I, I need to meet you. Right. You, you're, uh, you are the author of the book, Return, mm-hmm. Dr. Georgina Cannon. You can pick it up on the Internet, on, the, on uh, Amazon or uh, Borders, and I'm sure Barnes & Noble will have it. And... Uh, and in, in, as they say in the normal outlets, and if somebody wants to talk to you directly, could, can you counsel people over the phone? I can spend a little time with them, but without seeing their face and feeling their their actual energy, I, I can give them some guidance. But I certainly couldn't spend a lot of time with them. That wouldn't be fair to you, them. We're going to run out of time today. But when, one one of the things that I would like to talk to you about in the future yeah. is, um, can you you can help people pick the right counselor, pick the right person to help them, right? Oh, absolutely. We've been talking again with Dr. Georgina Cannon. What's your website again, please? www.ont-hypnosis-center.com Make it a great day, everybody. Thank you, doctor. It's been a pleasure. Have a wonderful time. And take care.